more gruesome details can be found in book written by a local reporter. Blood Relative Portrait of a Mass Murder was written by Milwaukee Sentinel reporter Crocker Stephenson and includes a ton of details regarding the incident that were never previously released. Stephenson's book documents the individual autopsy report for each victim, photographs of the Kunsi's home, and transcripts of police interviews with Kenny Cutts. The book also features photographs of the Kunz family prior to the murders. Helen purchased ammunition prior to the killings. A few weeks before the murder, Helen purchased 22 bullets, the very same type of ammo used for the murders from the local Weiler hardware store. During a conversation with the clerk, she said that the bullets were for her son, who was going to kill some pesky blackbirds on their property. While Chris Jacobs Roman III was convicted of kidnapping Helen with the assumption that he also carried out the murders, this startling detail leaves the possibility open that Helen killed her family and took her own life. The reclusive family lived in squalor, yet had piles of cash. The death of the Kunz family revealed how reclusive the clan had become. When investigating the incident, the police were unable to find any relatives, friends, or even acquaintances. It felt as though they never spoke to anyone outside of their immediate family. All anyone knew was that they were hoarders who lived in a ramshackle house on 108 acres of land. Their house was in shambles, with no running water, no furnace, and only a wood-burning stove to keep out the cold Wisconsin winters. The decrepit living conditions weren't totally unexplainable, considering none of them held jobs, yet strangely, over zero was found stashed throughout the home in different areas. Even more strangely, whoever killed the Kunz family didn't take the money, some of which was found in plain sight. Chris Jacobs was found not guilty of murder, but later found guilty of kidnapping. A small-time criminal named Chris Jacobs Roman III was initially fingered for the murder, as he had previously interacted with some of the cubs regarding the purchase of a vehicle. Jacobs was pretty much the only non-family member to ever interact with the cubs, which made him the prime suspect. The trial was brief and ultimately Jacobs was acquitted for lack of evidence. However, his ex-girlfriend, Stacy Wise, later came forward in 1993, claiming to have heard Jacobs's confession. Jacobs's public defender alleged that Wise was merely trying to get revenge on Jacobs and called the woman a disgruntled. Regardless, the evidence was soon presented at trial. Since people cannot be tried twice for the same offense under the provision of double jeopardy, Prosecutors needed to find another way to charge Jacobs. Although a murder charge was off the table, they realized they could charge Jacobs with the abduction and imprisonment of Helen. This time around Jacobs was not as lucky and received a 31-year sentence. Kenneth's mother Helen was missing from the crime scene, but was later found. When the bodies were discovered, every Kunt's family member but Helen was accounted for. Had the 70-year-old woman coldly murdered her whole family? Was she even physically capable of committing such an act? No one seemed to think so, and a search party was quickly formed to locate the woman. The community rallied around the hope that Helen would someday be found, and created t-shirts and buttons with Where's Helen printed on the front. Unfortunately, her body was discovered nine months after the murders, near a creek in Medford. Why? This new grisly piece of evidence only served to further complicate an already baffling mystery. 
Khan's family frequently watched adult films together. Kunsi's house was barely fit to live in. There was no running water, and the only heat source was a single wood-burning stove that the family apparently used for cooking. All of the Kunz were hoarders, and trash littered every corner of the rotting estate. Despite the unkempt interior of their farmhouse, the Kunz did have a few modern conveniences, including a television and a VCR. When the home was searched after the murders, an enormous library of sexually explicit videotapes and magazines was found. The police believed that the Kunz watched adult films together as a family. This hypothesis was furthered by a remark Helen had made to a store clerk a few weeks prior to her disappearance. While purchasing an electric toaster, she mentioned that she was angry with her family for watching dirty movies on the VCR. On July 4, 1987, Kunt's family was murdered in their sleep. On July 4, 1987, Kunt's family was murdered in their sleep. Hey guys, thank you so much for the support and likes and comments down below. And also thank you so much for watching and I look forward to see you in the next video then. Take care. Bye.